people actually write tests? How many people actually write functional tests? Keep your hands up, we're, we're going to start. How many people test more than just the positive test cases, testing actual edge case boundaries? How many people can tell me what an edge case boundary is? <laughs> <laughs> going until all the hands are um, No, that, that's actually that was a better hand count than I was expecting. So, in Rails, we have a really nice framework for writing tests. I find that almost all the clients I go to either write atrocious tests or they leave these wonderful tests in that are really good. They're called a certain truth. <laughs> they don't do anything. And really, out of the box, they should have been flunking, not asserting true. Um, because they should be forcing you to do something. So one of the things that I find when I'm uh, writing functional tests uh, for a Rails app is that I want, and some of this is a style issue, I want to split up my test as much as possible. So I test all my edge case boundaries separately so I can see failure patterns across the board when I get a full run. If I screw up authentication for a certain class of user, I want to see all these tests show up that say you screwed up for this certain test of user, and it becomes obvious what I did just by looking at the names of the tests that fail. Unfortunately, there's a lot of work associated with that. It involves refactoring your tests a lot so that you've got these nice descriptive um, uh, uh, utility functions that handle your setup, handle your teardown, do all this other stuff, and you know, it still reads like a nice little story, because that's what these tests are. They're stories. Functional tests are stories. A user comes to your site, he logs in, he does this stuff, and he checks out that it should cost 25 bucks. That's a story. So there's a lot of work to doing that when you split it up by, by edge case boundaries, by, by your, your failure states and your positive states and all that stuff. So I came up with this thing called a functional test matrix, and it's very much related to uh, a local, uh, where Cunningham's uh, fit or fitness, which is a different intent. His intent was to be able to allow the business owners to write the tests either in a spreadsheet or a word table or, or whatever in, in, in a medium that's friendly to them in a way that's clean for them. So they can say, say have a table that says for this type of user, it's going to cost 25 bucks. For this type of user, it's going to cost 13.50. Blah, 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 blah. And it translates that in a test on the fly, and it comes back and colors things based on whether they're passing or failing, because business users like colors. <laughs> so my intent is different. My intent is to make our lives easier and have things still readable to anyone else. So I came up with this functional test matrix, which allows me to say, I'm going to go up here a bit. Allows me to say I've got this matrix called media RW and I've got these edge case values. And there's documentation up here saying what that is, and I'm not going to get into it. It's really inconsequential. Um, and one of the nice things is, is I, I extended uh, functional test matrix recently, so I have this magic action or magic result called OK. And OK is just going to dispatch to the validator for index by name. But what it allows you to do, especially in Emacs, is OK is green, which is awesome. Um, these are basically that I'm, I'm backfilling a different series of tests, and I don't know what the answer is yet, so it's just a placeholder for me. But we have like these things where uh, this result uh, for the action update tags for um, a user created content UO is, is at the top of the column. Uh, user created content viewed by other is marked read only, and that's it. That's an error. They're actually going to get an error that says no, 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 it's read only. I'm trying to I'm trying to screw with this. Um, so on and so forth. Basically, it allows me to, one, lights on. One, go to a review session with one page printout of 20 to 50 tests. No code. Here are the results of what we're expecting to happen for these actions and these edge case boundaries. Here are our results. And one of the things you see is, one, you see patterns across the board for a, a given thing, you're going to have uh, error cases for the right quadrant of the matrix. And across this column, you're going to see things screw up for anything that's not idempotent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get a visual of the test results. The other thing you get is that every, don't worry about this, everything's dry. Um, you get an init method called based on what the matrix name was. So a matrix RO will have one. 
in a dozen parent lakes on refractiveness. And media, oops, media RW has one right there. So that piece gets called first. And all of your global setup for that style of test, or for that matrix of test, goes there. Then each action gets a setup, including generally the, the running of that action. And then, based on what the result code is, that validator gets run. So it's the simple story of set it up, run the action, validate that it works. It's a three part series, there's three Legos that go with each one. And every single token you see here becomes a Lego, a, a, a function that does that piece of work. Everything's dropped across the board. It's really, really clean. And what I'm seeing here, roughly, and this, these are semi bullshit numbers, and again, I'm glad that it's not the room. I'm seeing roughly a 60 to 1 ratio between my matrix and actual code. I do so much less working on this, and I get so much higher level view of what the results should be. I'm able to take this to a design review and say, are you sure for this given edge case we want this type of result? And they go, uh, actually, no, that sounds terrible. We want it to be this type of result. And I change the results, and I write a Lego, and I'm done. One Lego, it's piece, it's, it's that much code, it's nothing. Um, I, think, I think it's valuable. Now, one thing that it does do, as we saw with uh, Eric's presentation, is the count of your tests goes through the roof. So, um, because it's just so easy to do. These things, they're, they're geometric expansion. You add a new action or you add a new uh, edge case boundary and boom, you've got that many more tests. So, one thing that does become important and is a priority to, to Eric and I on our project is we have to profile our tests. Now, the nice thing about that is, is generally it's not the tests that are slowing things down, it's the implementation that's slowing things down. So every time we make our test faster, we make our implementation faster, the users are happier. Um, I think they, they work well together. No. Uh, we have power. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show off. And are there any questions? Just for the sake of me being slightly annual, can, can you please go back and, and explicitly state what each of the headers in one of the examples is? OK, so we got, and I'm, I'm, I'm not answering your question yet. UO, U U U O U M, da 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 da. What that is, is that is a two character code for two combinations of edge cases. Uh, the first one is who created the content, the second one is who's looking at the content. OK, so, just to, so if I was having a simple user access, then I'd have a guest a user and, and, and a person who has ownership of an object? Yeah. Or, yeah. And if I have a more complex ownership model where there's membership and, and different levels, I just add, add more letters? Yeah, you add more letters, or like we did down here, is we broke it up um, with a little bit of the init, as we said, uh, one's for uh, media read write and one's for media read only. Um, and that's, that's just because and you're going to have this problem with, with Ward's fit. You're going to have a problem with, with a lot of things. I'm basically taking three dimensions and whack it down to two. Um, and in reality, if I really wanted to test all the edge case boundaries I wanted to, I'm actually doing like four or five dimensions because there's all these orthogonal um, sets of, of state that then need to be done in combination. And actually, what I, what I did in one case is uh, the, the previous version of this, and that was the code that did work, uh, this code won't run right now, um, was distinguishing between uh, creator, owner, and accessor. And there were two edge cases for creator because we were thinking about it wrong. And I actually collapsed that down saying, no, actually, one person always creates it. And there's no other such state because the creator can't change. That's actually static in, in the case of our app. And, there's pros and cons to how you can do it. I mean, I'm, I'm taking a chance here by making this a two-dimensional thing. But in reality, your regular functional tests are one dimension from top to bottom. So you're already losing that much more information. So I'm just getting a little bit more visual elements. Is your, is your matrix always dense or is it sparse sometimes? Um, I actually didn't show that. There's one. Anytime it says NA, it just doesn't run. So in that case, you can do as sparse as you want. And what we found actually, like, there's a, another set of tests where I've got this tiny matrix and this big matrix. And the tiny matrix is for um, 
it's for the non-impotent action, so uh, the, the creates and the deletes, and those guys go in there because, no, the deletes don't because it's for a data that exists. So all the stuff where it's winding up creating something or, or copying something, it's going to come from that. And so we just kind of split them out so we don't have sparse meetings. Okay, so, so just to see if I can distill this down to um, something that makes sense to me, you're setting up, you have codes to set up what the initial conditions for the tests are. You say, here's all the tests get, that get run, and here's the results that I expect, some kind of result code from that test. Yeah. So, it, so it's all just mix and match. Yes. So, but you need to have routines for each of those kinds of you initial. You need a Lego for each symbol. OK. So, we can so it's like a big telephone switchboard. Can we see a Lego? Can we see what? A Lego. Here's a Lego. Did you say Lego? What are you saying? I thought Lego. you were saying Lego. Yeah. So we have matrix underscore setup underscore action name. And so this is going to get run for all of our favorites. Or for a delete. We say, well, it needs to be post, and here are our arts, and go do the damn thing. So, so, how, so how do the, how do the, like the UU or the UA codes feed into that? They feed into... Um, well, one, they get passed in a setup in case you have very specific things you can do for the action that aren't global. And then this is a little bit of a mess and doesn't quite match up to it because I haven't fully rewritten this. Um, they get passed into um, the ma uh, matrix init for that given uh, matrix name um, such that uh, they call it actor, actually. Um, so then I'd have a case statement that says, well, my owner's going to be Bob, and then my media is going to be uh, create media, or if it wasn't for uh, for a given edge case, I might create the media for a different owner. So um, if I do a, a, a generator to generate this, so okay. So say we rewrote the scaffold for um, the controllers and generated this particular test file. I mean, oh, that's fucked up, but I like that idea. I mean, you'd have <laughs> variations. You know, if you want one that had no users, no notion of user control. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got one of those edge cases is n, which is nobody, which is someone who's not logged in. Yeah. So and we actually, actually we actually you, call log out. So you'd, you'd probably generate a, 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 some sort of um, default init and then a default matrix and a yeah. default set up, set up and a default. I see where you're going with this, Mr. New Jack. Mr. Lazy Man. <laughs> um, so that. Action that I showed you down here, um, delete, delete is there. That is for the action setup after the global setup um, for that matrix, and then down below, uh, read on. There's one. Um, this is for when we specify that it should be read only. We go and say when we send this, it really should be raising an active record, read only record, an exception. That's awesome. Uh, versus. Uh, in here because I'm just scraping this code myself. Right. <laughs> time, to, time to change it, I'll get paid. Um, so this is the test delete. I just did the, the new naming thing so that um, things are all black right now. Um, in the case where the code is OK, it'll be calling this by default. And we go ahead and say assert the success, uh, assert template nil, blah, 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 and that the, the damn thing's gone when we're done. So so, so a side question related to the fact that you've got to make these things how fast. Um, do all your controller tests hit the database? Or do you, do it, or you have some using an alternative? Or? No, they're currently the database. Yeah, and I think if we wanted to get another boost out of this, we just switch over the test database to SQLite. How fast does this set of tests run? When you're you outside? saw them run with their 26x, oh, uh, uh, which is 3,000. Uh, and that's how many days? 3,000 assertions. We could use it. Right. right. It 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 yeah. 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 On the work. Yeah, that's why I can actually tell you guys you're doing it. Ryan, to add a dimension, uh, you're going to potentially, like, for a dimension that adds two more edge cases, yeah. um, you know, put a double the yeah. test them there. Um, can you add that in and sort of classify, oh, well, for all of these edge cases in this matrix, it's going to have this new behavior, and for all these, it's going to have this new behavior when it's set to this, and additively sort of just say, here's a new dimension, and it kind of has just this general effect on the matrix? I guess you could. In the case of the read-only versus read-write, I just made another matrix and made it part of the setup. Right. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is expand columns with the extra codes, um, or make new codes entirely that have a full list of pieces in it. There's trade-offs in each way. I don't know if that's the solution.
So I'm looking at this in a general sense. The Take your way, bottles. It's right proper to think of like actions or tests going down and then fit, almost like fixtures or mods going across. Or yeah, it's it's not necessarily fixtures and mods, but there's a good correlation. All right. Basically, what type of because uh, I don't correct. necessarily care about users. Well, for me, the users are my state. Okay. And it's, it's, it's one of the dimensions of all the edge case boundaries of how something's interacting with this action. So in the case of uh, delete, I want to make sure that the person who owns it can delete it. I want to make sure the person who doesn't can't, unless it's a wiki. You know, in the case of the Maya matrix, would look different. So it's such an entry state better than an exit state. Yes. Mm. One other thing I'd like to say. Um, Did he have that DVD that played? Right, before we go, somebody else said this comes. This, this is already in Zen test, or you're this is already in Zen test, but the new OK thing is not. That'll be in the next release. So do we, um, does the readme come with some example of, of this and how? Uh, there's a there's a hellishly large uh, RDoC on the box. Here.